Okay, so let's go to the specific evidence here. Okay, in the first pl time that they filed into a court, they were the plaintiff in a complaint against Opportunity Homes for Quiet Title. And they stated that they had standing because on, uh, on February 4th, 2011, a corporation assignment of Deed of Trust Nevada was recorded conveying to NationStar the beneficial interest under the Deed of Trust. And it has a little footnote there. So now the significance of saying 2011, I mean, making that particular lie, is because the, the important relevant times are ownership of the note before the HOA foreclosure sale. And this would be before the HOA foreclosure sale, which was August 15th, 2000. Uh, 14. So then they, this is how I know that they know that they were lying, is that they exhibit two in that same original complaint where they're supposed to be establishing their standing and their, their burden of proof, they have to prove this as the plaintiff. They said a true and correct copy of the notice of assignment of deed of trust recorded as book and instrument number 2014-12. 01518. Okay, the protocol for the instrument numbers in the county recorder's office are four digit year, two digit month, two digit day. That is December 1st, 2014. That is an actual, that is what they actually recorded. It was not in 2011 before the HOA sale. And they obviously knew it because the exhibit they attached was the real thing they recorded. Okay, on the next uh, page in there under parties or on the page before, they said Nation Star is now and at all times relevant. Herein it is the beneficiary under the deed of trust signed by Gordon Hansen recorded on July 22nd, 04. Okay, a total, total lie. Now, that's critical because that's the thing they're supposed to prove. They did not prove it at all. They never had to submit anything to judicial scrutiny. And if they had, the judge would have seen that they, they didn't own it before the sale and that all of these were actual lies. Okay, so like the next time, okay, we're going to the fourth inconsistency, is the actual exhibit in that complaint and that December 1st, 14 recording. Okay, so in this, where Nation Star is um, well, lying, so, you know, it's not just judicial estoppel that's my legal theory on this, it is fraud. It is stealing, it's stealing to claim you are owed a debt and then of that magnitude. Oh my God, I can't believe they got away with this. I just cannot let them get away with this. Anyway, the, um, this is the exhibit that was supposed to substantiate their claim that they became the beneficial owner of the Hanson Deed of Trust on February 4th, 2011. It is recorded by Nation Star, in which Nation Star says that Bank of America, Bank of America assigned it to them. And that Nation Star was authorized to execute this assignment as Bank of America's attorney in fact. However, Nation Star Mortgage is not and was not a, Bank of America's attorney, in fact, because there was no power of attorney. No power of attorney was disclosed. Now, you can maybe try and say, you know, you have somebody's power of attorney on a handshake deal, but it does not have any legal merit. And these people know that. They know that. They know how you handle 
property transactions. They know that you have to have a written, signed power of attorney with dates and, and all that stuff. I mean, geez, everybody else has to. So they didn't have it. So what else is wrong with this? Well, the other thing is that Bank of America did not have any interest to assign. Bank of America had defaulted already on that uh, Jimmy Jack case because Bank of America had lied their, in their own way, and I'll, I'll describe that later. But Bank of America did not have any interest. The um, one recorded claim that uh, Bank of America made uh, recorded on April 12th of 12. That was not a valid claim, and they walked it back. And so on um, September 9th, 2014, Bank of America didn't rescind their phony claim. They just kind of got it off their books by saying that they gave it to Wells Fargo. Anyway, so whether it was because Bank of America's recorded claim was void because it had no notary record and it was done by a, a robo-signer, whether that's the reason that uh, Bank of America didn't have any interest on uh, December or October 23rd of 2014, or because on September 9th, 2014, Bank of America recorded that they gave their interest, if any, to Wells Fargo, for either of those two reasons, there was nothing for NationStar to assign to itself because, because Bank of America didn't have anything. Okay, so here we're coming down to the next claim. Now, there's only two complaints um, in, in these uh, consolidated cases. So the complaint one uh, that was... Um, Jimmy Jack versus Bank of America we'll talk about later. And we already talked about the uh, complaint two, which uh, Nation Star was the plaintiff against Opportunity Homes. And now we are going to talk about how Nation Star got into being a defendant instead of a plaintiff. They, instead of pursuing their claims under uh, Nation Star versus Opportunity Homes, they filed a motion to intervene on the Jimmy Jack versus Bank of America case that was already closed, that Bank of America already had defaulted and gone. And so they got in there um, and they filed on June 2nd of 16 uh, a um, answer and affirmative defenses and counterclaim against Jimmy Jack. And <laughs> they claimed in this that they were the current beneficiary. So they say they, in number 12 and in number 13, in their claim against Jimmy Jack that they are, in 2016, they are the current beneficiary. Now, if that December 1st, um, 2014, they were, they were the uh, beneficiary of record, but this, they rescinded. They rescinded this December 1st, uh, 14, later. And so saying they were current beneficiary is false. Okay, in that same thing, they said they were the current beneficiary because Wells Fargo assigned its interest to NationStar on... December 1st of 14. No. <laughs> that's, not what they, that's not what they recorded. It, they recorded that Baina, Bank of America, gave it to them, assigned it to them, and recorded that on December 1st. Wells Fargo did not. Okay, so they figured that out after I asked them a bunch of questions in discovery that they wouldn't answer. And then they recorded a week after discovery was over that they were rescinding that claim. Okay, but we'll, we'll get back to that. No, I guess we'll go do it now. Okay, so the rescission. So the one claim that they had recorded before the end of discovery, they rescinded. 
They said, as though they, they said under oath that they hereby invalidate and nullify the assignment to the same extent and effect as though the assignment had never been issued and recorded. So they went through that whole trial for three years, 16, 17, and 18. They fought with uh, this case, and they never produced any evidence, and then they rescinded their only claim. Now, the interesting thing about it is that they, this was executed by their guy, their employee, Nation Star's employee, Mohammed Hamid. He signed this rescission as though he was the vice president of Bank of America. And as though Nation Star was Bank of America's attorney in fact. Again, no disclosed power of attorney, nothing under oath like they said, you know. Anyway, they said, I guess they did rescind under oath, but nothing else under oath. Okay, so going back to that claim that they were saying in their claim against Jimmy Jack, they were saying that the exhibit was the actual exhibit. So in the exhibit, it said that on December 1st of 14, in the exhibit, it said Bank of America gave it to him, but in the body of their complaint, they said they got it from Wells Fargo. Okay, so what actually is in the exhibit Number five of that, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, counterclaim against Jimmy Jack was what they recorded. The phony, phony thing, no power of attorney, saying that uh, Bank of America gave them something that they didn't have anything to give, and then they rescinded it. Okay, so here's the rescission. Uh, back, they said, we did this, you know, like, Okay, so we go through this whole trial. I mean, a lot of, uh, well into the six figures in attorney's fees. And then they go, oh, just kidding. Okay, so then I'm saying, well, you can't just keep changing your mind. Plus, the minute they finished rescinding that, their same guy, Mohammed Hamid, claimed to be the Wells Fargo vice president. And <laughs> and then Wells Fargo's non-existent interest was assigned to Nation Star by Nation Star's guy, acting as if he's the Wells Fargo's vice president, and without any power of attorney. There's just no end to these people. Okay, so as I said, you know, like they're trying to get rid of me. And so, I mean, there's a lot of, there's parties that are making claims. Like, I'm making a claim as an individual that I should get that house because I have the deed that assigned me all of the interest of the Gordon B. Hansen Trust, which I closed in 2017 as insolvent. So, what they did was... Nation Star filed a motion for summary judgment against Jimmy Jack. Jimmy Jack never answered that 2016 counterclaim. And so Jimmy Jack was in default. And so Nation Star should have just gone for default. Could have just gone for default. But they, were, they weren't trying to do that. They filed a... Uh, a notice of intent to take default, and then Jimmy Jack, you know, did something. But this, this whole thing that they're doing was just to get rid of me because Jimmy Jack would make a deal with them, and I said, no, you are lying, and I can prove it. So they had to get rid of me. Anyway, the, um, they said in that motion for summary judgment against Jimmy Jack, that 
number five. After Baina assigned its interest to Wells Fargo, that was what I mentioned, September 9th of 14, an assignment outside the chain of title from Baina to NationStar was recorded on 2014. And so that outside the chain of title is a euphemism that they are using to cover up the fact that they had no authority whatsoever to record that, and they did. And then they said that Wells Fargo assigned the deed of trust to NationStar by an assignment on March 8th of 2019, again, a week after the end of discovery. And then the next thing they say is true. NationStar has serviced the loan since December 1st, 2013, and Bain has serviced it before that. It's true. That's all they were. They were the servicers, both of them trying to fake it so that they could get standing to foreclose on a note they did not own. Bank of America at least had the sense to get out before filing uh, these false claims like um, NationStar did, though. Okay, so now Nation Star has made a, a motion for quiet title against Jimmy Jack. I filed a whole bunch of stuff to put a stop to this, including going to the Attorney General and saying, this is fraud, you, you need to stop this, which he ignored. Anyway, so <laughs> then the uh, uh, Nation Star just withdrew its complaint, withdrew its motion for summary judgment. So they did not proceed with this. They did not do anything. They just withdrew it. In the motion for summary judgment, they withdrew their uh, unjust enrichment claim. And, it, and then the day that they managed to get the court to strike my counter motion for summary judgment and my objection to this, they got them stricken from the record because they got the court to believe that I had never been a party. I had just been filing this stuff for my house, I guess. 